named Bothell, they said they're looking for a wills and probate attorney. And I have a good friend who does that. So I reached out to him and he wants the information. So he might be looking to join. Yeah. Well, Mary, just, just connect any of these people with me. Right. I, I can, I can help. I can assist. I can answer any questions. Let, let me do the legwork. Right. You, you just introduce. So awesome. excellent. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and start. Um, I will uh, just basically uh, keep my eyes open for anyone else who pops in. So bear with me here. Once again, I'm going to wash out my already pasty complexion with the share screen, but I'll try to make it a little bit less painful. Uh, welcome everybody to Digital PNA. Uh, can I get a nod just real quick? We can all see the right screen. Okay, excellent. Thank you. I just let someone else in too. So good stuff. Um, and now it's not, not letting me hit next. That's my face. I'm going to move on. I'm the president of this chapter. No one wants to see that. Um, oh, but look, my new headshot. That's one of my auctioneer bow tie. Nice. shiny outfit ones. Anyway, um, this is the current membership. Um, I'm proud of the fact that we've already grown a bit. Um, thankfully, uh, Rosie has joined us and Mara has joined us. We, we had a little attrition this past year and that's okay. It happens. But that just means there's a bunch of gaps. And I will tell you that I'd like you to challenge me and say, Brian, you're wrong. Um, I know other groups that give little, you know, spiffs to bring people into the organization. I dare you to find one. Um, may, maybe not too seriously, because I'm sure someone's out there, but not in the Pacific Northwest that we know of. I like incentivizing folks, just saying thank you, because long story short, if you help grow this chapter, for example, or like Mara was saying before we started the meeting, one or two of the other physical chapters, you help the entire network grow, because just so you know, if you're in the Pacific Northwest, you can join as a guest any of our now 10 chapters twice a quarter, and reap the benefits of getting to know now 88 people throughout the entire organization. We're only going to get bigger and better. I love it. It's cool. And we're awesome. Need some volunteers. I know we've got like three guests here in the line. No, I guess two right now, maybe. No, three, because Nicole just, just joined. Hi, Nicole. Um, Hello. We need to get some people to do a volunteer role. It's fun. It's just an opportunity for you to uh, do a little something silly, but at the same time, we take it seriously as Marcel's trying to hide a smile. We need someone to be the photographer of the group today. And what that means is what it says. You can take a screenshot of the entire group once we get back to the multiple screens. You can you know, turn around, do a selfie shot of yourself and your screens behind you, whatever. But if you then send it to us either in the chat window or after the fact, we might utilize that for social media to help get the word out. We have fun here as well as get educated. Uh, tracker is someone who listens for quotables, uh, might note some data points. If Marcel feels like number dropping here today, she might impress us with cool things like that. Track that stuff because those are things that we could all utilize from the standpoint of notes after the fact. Um, doodler, I'm, I really want to go back to a previous uh, piece of artwork that Mike did uh, months and months ago. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you for, for the time being, but point is doodle something, have fun. If Marcel's talking about certain things about data points and you want to turn that into, into a graph or something, doodle something throughout the meeting and then show us afterwards. I'm going to handle the timer position just because I've got the screen control, all that fun stuff. So can I get a photographer to volunteer? And for the record, I will volunteer if I don't have volunteers. Mike, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll be you. the photographer. Oh, okay. Mike okay. can do it too. <laughs> already, already got taken. Um, Nicole, are you willing to be the tracker? I can do that. Okay. Thank you. And, and do we get to see you today? Or are you like not wearing pants or something? <laughs> I'm actually just trying to figure it out, which sounds oh, okay. really sad. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it's only been three years of Zoom. So I, I, I know. It, it's, it's a steep learning curve. Um, <laughs> well, thank you. And can I have someone who's willing to doodle the data, doodle something during the discussion points throughout the meeting? I can't see all the bobbleheads on the screen because I'm sharing right now. So I'll need a vocal yes. Well, and it's not to doodle the data. It's to prepare yourself for storyboarding. Okay. So do- you, you said it better. Simple sketches. I would do it, but I'm speaking, so I don't want to do You're it. Speaking. Hey, Gwen, <laughs> I'm gonna put you on the spot. Oh, do it, Gwen. Gwen, you willing? Yes, sure. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm needing to shove pills in my puppies. 
mouth at the moment. Okay. Not, <laughs> Sorry. Not, not weird at all. Okay. We're just, <laughs> we're just gonna move forward then. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do 60 second commercials around the room. I will time it if you see my uh, background turn red. It just means wrap it up so we can get around the room. Let me minimize the screen so I'm not looking again extra uber pasty. Um, Mike's Mike's headlamp just just turned <laughs> on in his weird little hamster booth at at, at his business. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. Um, Sixty second commercial. Tell us about your business. Maybe something that separates you from your competition, or if something amazing just happened recently. Share that. Right. Uh, so let's go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and let me just pick Mike to start. Oh. My and gosh. then folks in the chat window, I'm going to write up an order of names so we can just blast through the commercials in that order. Okay, Mike? Thank you, Brian. Well, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. It's one of my favorite hours and a little bit of each week, Digital PNA. I'm Mike, now here at the Puget Sound Business Journal, but still very much a fan of my previous company where I worked, BizX. The Puget Sound Business Journal... Uh, is a recognized, credible, authoritative source of business news here in the Pacific Northwest. It's important because of the audience we deliver to. We can get your message or an advertiser's message in front of business decision makers. Uh, it is a targeted B2B advertising vehicle uh, with um, a history, with, with great content, and a terrific team. I couldn't be happier to be here. Uh, and would love to talk to you or any of your um, any of your colleagues or uh, contacts about reaching decision business decision makers. Thanks, Brian. Red, good job. And look at that chat window. Next up is Marcel. Ooh, I didn't even get to like think about it first. You just throw me out there. <laughs> Hey, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. This is Marcel with Dreamosity. Dreamosity is coming up on a 15-year anniversary. Can you believe it? I've been supporting remarkable leaders for a long time now. And I love it because every year in business, I learn so much from my clients. My clients tend to be a little bit older than me and definitely wiser. And so I just love supporting people, coming alongside them with their marketing campaigns, Facebook videos, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, you name it. I just love to help people with big, important ideas. So if that's you or somebody you know, I am looking for new clients and cool projects to be a part of more than anything. Uh, you can always learn more at dreamosity.com. Awesome. Very nice. Okay. I'm up. I'm Angela Ohm. I have much ado, a virtual assistant business. I am a virtual office manager, if you will. So if there are things that a, an established business needs to delegate, needs help with, then that's what I do. I sort of differentiate myself a little bit from other virtual assistants because I do primarily office management. And so I take on the email management, client, customer, um, uh, it, communication, and I'm actually quite good at talking with unhappy clients. So that's a little special talent of mine. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm uh, Mary Hilton. I'm one of the co-owners of Sound Care Agency. We, um, we provide in-home care. We have we employ about 80 caregivers here locally. They do um, temp backup care for Microsoft and Facebook and a lot of the large tech firms um, for their employees. So they can stay at work when um, schools are closed, kids are sick, or their partner or parents need non-medical companion care. Um, we also do placements full-time for families if they want to hire someone long-term, like a nanny for the next year or two. But primarily, we uh, we do temp staffing, but caregivers, and they're all our employees. We're looking to work with um, more small to medium-sized businesses that don't want the price tag that comes with offering the backup care program that the large firms offer. We, um, we're a little bit more cost-effective for those um, employers that want to provide backup care to their employees, Sound Care Agency. Hi everyone, Gwen Tegulao, Benefit Solutions Northwest. Uh, thank you so much for having me today. I am a benefit architect. Um, our company specifically is in health insurance brokerage. So we're able, we're catering to individuals, families and small businesses as well. Um, specifically anyone, you know, over um, two plus employees. Um, we also get to know the businesses 
um, themselves as well. And the employees, um, we take an extra step as an agency and get to know um, your employees by doing health assessments. So that's one thing that stands out um, compared to other agencies. Um, you know, get to know and go into a deeper dive of, of your health as a group instead of, um, you know, your Washington base. I, SIC code is what um, based upon your premiums most of the time. So based on your industry. So I'm able to um, customize the plans and benefits specifically. So went to go with Benefit Solutions Southwest. Thank you guys. All right, I am Karen Kurtig with KK Financial Solutions, and I own a, a boutique uh, wealth management company. Um, I not only do financial advising and uh, wealth management, but I also do money coaching, business valuations. So if there's businesses out there that want to either sell or sell their business or purchase another business, I can help with that. I also do estate planning basic estate planning with trusts and wills. And then I also have branched out and I help divorced people because in 2008, I got divorced and walked away with a large sum of money, put it all in the house right before the 2008 housing market crash. And had I had an advisor uh, advising me, I probably wouldn't have done that. And I'd have a bigger portfolio today. So uh, Karen Cardig with KK Financial Solutions. Okay, uh, this is Nicole Otnes with BECU Home Loans. I would just like, um, let's see, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out how to start the video. Do I just press start video? I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, okay. Yay, okay, I'm on here, sorry. Uh, so Nicole Otnes with BECU Home Loans. I really enjoy helping my clients either buy their first home, an investment property, um, and also can do land loans, home equity lines of credit. A good example of something I've worked on recently is I was able to help a client who had 19 days to close because their recent lender actually dropped the ball. And so I was able to get the appraisal done and going in five days, fully underwritten in two, and we're just kind of going through the last steps. So even, even if there's some things that happen, you know, along the way, I'd be happy to help jump in and help out, get get the process done. Thank you. Hello, I'm Nancy. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm the director of the Snohomish Chamber of Commerce. Um, we have about 280 uh, uh, business and nonprofit members. Um, so the chamber uh, supports and promotes uh, small business and nonprofit organizations in our community. We also um, partner with um, the Snohomish Farmers Market for a young entrepreneurs program. And we are also just beginning partnerships with the Snohomish School District and uh, Boys and Girls Club of Snohomish County for career awareness um, and then um, also assisting uh, with some possible uh, future on internships, uh, scholarships, um, and apprenticeships. So it's me. I believe that's my turn, right? Yep. <laughs> yes. All right. Rosie with TAP Services. Apologies for the uh, late arrival. Things have been kind of hectic this morning, but in a good way. Um, and so what TAP Services stands for is Taxes, Accounting, and Payroll. So I am your uh, digital guru for bookkeeping. <laughs> I know, I had to think there on the fly. But um, gosh, I want to share just kind of um, another success story I've had this week. So I have a therapist um, as a client, and he was getting a little stressed out as far as AR is concerned for it. And that's accounts receivable. You know, clients are late paying him, insurance being late paying him, and there's like stuff going on. So I created an Excel spreadsheet with nifty formulas and everything else to download his individual clients and put them all in each tab. And so when he opened it and we had a meeting, he's just like, oh, my heart rate just went down. Thank you so much. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so he was happy with that. And so now it's like a collaborative uh, spreadsheet that we share so he can go in. And when the clients come in to see him, he's like, hey, you know what? You uh, you still actually owe this much, you know? And so he's able to collect in person if necessary and uh, just have that ongoing um, spreadsheet for him. So that's what I like to do. I like to collaborate with my clients, right? They They think that in accounting, there's only one way to do things. Not really. You know, you just have to kind of go outside the box and think. Yes, Brian, thank you. So <laughs> Rosie with Tap Services, and uh, that's me. Awesome. Okay, uh, this part ends with me. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Brian Trenler. I co-own Laugh Tech with Miss Marcel Allen. Um, would you consider this uptime? Or would you consider this uptime if you're on video? Hopefully you chose the first one. If you're in front of the camera, if you're facing the camera, ideally if you're looking at the camera versus looking over here when you're talking to someone, people notice this. If you're not getting impact with your videos, Marcel and I can come help you, whether it's on Zoom or face-to-face. -face. We love storyboarding. We love helping with scripting. And guess what? You're all funny. Some of you may be funny looking, but point is, is that work with what you've got. We all have a style of humor that we can help develop. We have what's called the six methods of humor. It is actually six different techniques that deliver your same message, whether it's different um, demographics, different age groups, or just the same way to tell the story in multiple ways to reach people on multiple levels. It makes you more memorable. It makes you more likable. It makes you more listenable. Ideally, it makes you more watchable and very ROIable in the long run. And as you can tell, We've mastered the English language and we're very scientific-ish. So if you know people that suffer from boring and want to work on their message, we want to hear from you. Okay. So next up, folks, I'm actually, for starters, thank you so much for all your commercials. They were actually fantastic. What I loved about it and wanted to convey is hopefully this gave you an idea that, oh, I want to follow up with Gwen. She offers benefits for businesses or, oh, I want to follow up with Karen. I know someone who might be going through a divorce and might be looking for stability and advisement, right? The whole point of the commercials is it's supposed to stimulate your brain to say, I may know someone for you, or maybe I might need that service or product that you offer. So now to go a little bit deeper, this is always one of my most favorite parts is sharing the screen. We're going to do a tangent and go back around the room. Now, you may not know the answer to this. But I'm going to have Marcel go first because good heavens to Betsy, she is a content creator. So who is your favorite content mm. creator and why? That is the tangent for today. So again, we're going to go back around the room. I'll copy paste in the same advertisement you know, list of who's going to speak and when, but we'll have Marcel go first. So there'll be a quick edit there. But I want you to speak for 45 to 60 seconds if you know someone or if you find that when you're going to your stories or your reels whether it's instagram or facebook who pops up the most who have you subscribed to who are you following or maybe who have you found some benefit from so i'm not going to keep this image on the screen because i'd much rather see all your lovely faces yes even you michael but i'm going to hit stop and go back to this <laughs> And this is tough for me it is? oh no it can't be tough for you Dad. i follow probably at least a hundred like freaking fantastic people right. and thousands of mediocrely awesome people but well, today i'm going funny. to feature the budget mom and while i'm not a mom two years after i started after i wrote financial joy my financial planner was like marcel if you're talking about money you need to know about budgeting and i like i was like i hate budgeting anyway i did the budget mom like totally changed my perspective on budgeting and she makes budgeting and the art of budgeting like pretty and attractive and fun and thoughtful and she she's literally a multi-millionaire because of her budgeting skills and she is younger than me so she is like intellectually just swoon worthy it's very visual you guys know I preach about visuals all the time she literally shows you her budget and her like decisions and she talks through them and she's so transparent and so authentic that I'm just like man had I started at 20 who knows where I'd be anyway she's fantastic um she also has you know two little kids and now she's got a freaking chicken garden thing that she's budgeted for and I've like watched her budgeting all the ways anyway she's fantastic and um I don't know I could go on and on about her she just she makes money interesting to me and I just think everybody in business should follow her there you go and it was budget mom? 
Is the budget mom, yeah. Oh, and, and if you do have that link handy, if you're currently multitasking and struggling to find someone to talk about, grab that link if you can and share it in the chat window, please, because we'll always help utilize these syndication resources. Thank you, Marcel. Next up, Fishbowl, I mean, uh, Michael. <laughs> yes, Fishbowl, because this is the, uh, the little speaking booth here at the Puget Sound <laughs> Business Journal. Uh, it's like a game show, almost. Um, <laughs> So my commute now consists of taking the bus to the train and taking the train to the office. So I have lots more time to listen to podcasts. And I'm finding that there are two things I'm listening to in terms of content creation in podcasts. One is a great show, uh, an interviewer named Mark Marin. He's also a comedian. Uh, he typically does long form interviews with people that um, he finds interesting and, and, and he's a good solid interviewer, but I think he has a, a terrific uh, sense of how to humanize. That's something that I'm really keenly interested in, how, how, how you can approach things in a more, in the most humanistic way possible. The second is a sales motivational speaker named Ryan Dorn. He has a company called Brainswell Media. And likewise, he talks about how sales isn't pushing information out. It is really building a relationship. And um, that takes practice and it takes commitment. Uh, and it takes, again, a humanistic approach. So the content creators that I've caught to lately have been Mark Marin and Ryan Dorn. Awesome. Thank you. Answer. Oh gosh, this this is a tough one for me because I'm not a big I'm not super savvy with social media. Sorry, Marcel. Um, so uh, yeah, I had to scroll through my Instagram real quick and cheat. But uh, the first one that came up, Ask Vin. I've been watching a lot uh, on him because he teaches people how to speak, how to speak in groups, in front of groups, in public, and. Um, I am doing a lot more networking, a lot more talking to people. And so I'm just trying to improve on any way that I can. I can't remember his last name. Does anybody know? Vin, V-I-N-H, I believe is his first name. Hmm. Anyway, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, well, I can't really, I, I, I mean, what comes to mind is something that I'm interested in like, I, I think I'm more of a humor follower on um, social and I'm always trying to figure out what's coming next with my oldest, who's going to be turning 16. And I follow, um, it's called the Layton show. And he just, it's more, again, this isn't really super helpful for those of you, but if you have teens and they text you and get embarrassed around you all the time, which is what happens nonstop, the Layton show, he like posts set to lovely pop music, like texts that you get from your teens. And it's just amazing to me that we all are, I think, receiving the same messages. So that's all I could think of. I, I don't, I mean, there's other people that I follow that are more helpful, but um, the Layton show is a, uh, is a nice humor piece every day. Awesome. Next up is Gwen. Yeah, I'm gonna share that Instagram right here. <laughs> um, the first, um, you know, profile I thought of is the Shubidu Catering. So um, I've got a couple friends that actually work here as well, and the person who's charge of social media is actually I'm really good friends with as well. And so I think they just do a really good job of customizing their posts. Um, they even post um, regarding all the events that they host, even the individuals within the events that they're hosting, um, especially wedding events as well. And that's something they highlight a lot and a lot of food and, you know, pretty um, places within, you know, Edmond, Seattle area as well. So they're able to share that um, as a company. And I think it's super cool. Um, you know, they're, they're just personalized and they're always posting every day as well. So I think it's awesome. I think I'm next. So uh, one of the people that I follow, I put it in the chat. Her name is Jessica Weaver. And uh, I went through 
a coaching program with her back in like 2016. And she used to work with her dad, uh, Raymond James, as a financial advisor. And she's gone off and done her whole thing. It's called um, Pink Fix My Money. And I just like what she does because she's so on brand. She wears pink and black and white in every single post that she has. So she's totally on brand with her colors. Um, and she does all kinds of stuff um, other than just putting things on there about financial advising and that kind of stuff. So I watch her just because, A, she's a friend. And I think she does a great job with her social media. Okay, so I think like Angela, I I don't do a lot of social media following. I don't do podcasts, but I do like to follow humor. So one of the people that I follow, his tagline at least is front porch dad. I don't know if anybody's heard of it or not, <laughs> but uh, he just makes his reels are very short clips of uh, usually it's golf related or sports related events that are occurring. Uh, but they're just really funny because they're very relatable. A lot of the things that he says are things that people actually, like, I've thought that exact same thing in that same moment. So I just enjoy it because it makes me laugh. Um, I wasn't exactly clear on if this was specific to, um, visual content, um, I follow, it can be either. Is that what you said? Yeah. Um, I follow a lot of um, business and motivational um, people. I, I apologize if my screen is really dark. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, I uh, especially like Ed Milet, um, Mel Robbins, um, Lori Harder. <laughs> There's actually quite a bit. I, um, I, I always appreciate uh, conversations around um, good business practices, good mindset, um, and collaboration over competition. Awesome. Rosie? Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't confuse me, Brian. Nice guy. <laughs> Anyhow, um, let's see, tangent. Um, you know who I've been following that I actually like is D, I don't know if you guys uh, heard of him, but it's David T.S. Wood. And so uh, what? why I like to follow him is he has these short little reels and a lot of videos that he does once in a while on Instagram. And his motto is how to have a kick-ass life. <laughs> So I really like it. It's, it's always positive. And he always talks about how to live your best life, you know, in the world that we live in and what things he has done to make his life enjoyable. Yeah. And um, he's a, a motivational speaker and, you know, one of the best that I've seen so far. I've actually gone in person to uh, one of his events in Arizona and um, learned a lot probably new to where I'm at today because of him. So, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Once again, going to end on me. Um, for those of you who know me, I'm a very black and white person. There's very few shades of gray. I'm going to tell you how it is, how it should be. I'm always coachable. I may not always be right, but I'm very opinionated. So I relate a lot to Gary Vanderchuk. I wish I had his bank account. I think I have his spare change account. Actually, no, I probably don't even have a spare change account. But point is, he's a very blunt business person. And honestly, he pisses off a lot of people. But he also makes a lot of folks happy from an inspirational standpoint because he's basically running off the premise on a regular basis. Of, if, you want it, if, you want it, if you want something, go out and get it. If you need something, go out and find it. If you want to support something, why ask? Just do it. And he has that mentality of just go, go, go. And honestly, one of the most... Um, I think kind compliments I ever got was from Marcel Allen years ago when we had our very first office space in downtown Bothell because we spent time looking for things like we need desks or we need tables or whatever. And instead of 
going back and forth, not to not to just say, you know, I'm going to go do it raw, but I just went out and got stuff. I went out and found stuff. There was a bank that was closing down that had all these tables. I went and got the tables, all those types of things. I just, it's a matter of just wanting to think more with time management and not wasting time. And anyway, I resonate with a lot of what Gary says. I put the link in there. He's got a ton of podcasts. You can listen to it till you're blue in the face. But I would be shocked if you didn't find some level of relation, much less inspiration. So good stuff. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your input there. Um, I'm really excited because a bunch of you came, unfortunately, not just to see me, huh? but to listen and watch and hopefully engage with Miss Marcel Allen. So this is our speaker of the day. I'm only gonna keep this up on the screen for just a moment, but um, great headshot she had taken a few years back. And this is Marcel, she owns Dreamosity. She's the founder of dreamosity.com. She's also a, technically a three-time author, but she's mm -hmm. focused on financial joy. Uh, please take a moment and visit dreamosity.com, not right now, but after the meeting. And then if you're feeling a little bit financial and joyful as well, she has an ebook for sale. It is phenomenal. It is a big part of what she does, how she thinks, how she mentors, how she inspires. I'm gonna kill this. Uh, she, well, kill the shared screen here. And Marcel, I can only assume I need to have you yes. share some slides. So yes, you are here we go. host. Thank you. And thank you all for the answering that question so transparently, because the cool thing about what we're going to go into today is any one of those people that you mentioned could appear in your feature stories because you can share content from your favorites. And I recommend that you do. Uh, let's see what's happening here. Um, so today we're going to talk about reels versus stories. Um, this content is constantly changing in the world of social media, but I want to give you kind of a perspective to consider. There are a lot of other great people out there talking about these things, so feel free to see me as a coach, but I will not be your only coach. There's a lot of people navigating this world of social media and how do we get there and make magic happen. So today I'm going to break down reels versus stories and three very important things to consider. Um, and real quick, just a point of credibility. I've been doing this for a long time, you guys. It's wonderful. I love it. I have a lot of resources. So if you ever get stuck in business in general, I probably know someone who has a team that can help you with that. Um, but let's dive in. So reels versus stories. So reels, think of them as like a commercial like or in the evangelical video that are meant to be timeless, right? So these are not, hey, come to my event Friday. These are, I'm going to reuse these videos over and over and over again. Um, and they are meant for new people, people that don't know you yet. They're meant for people to stumble across you. So this is when you do want to reintroduce yourself. You want to talk about, you know, whatever it is you're talking about. These can often be very trendy. There's a lot of trends you can piggyback on. Karen's actually out of this group that I know of. She's been the, you've done a great job kind of working with your team member to, to find out what are the trends and how do we hop on these trends. And every month, you guys, there are new opportunities for you and your creative team to hop on these trends and kind of participate with a greater community out there. They're visually diverse. You can lever leverage templates, which I'll show you a little bit about that. Um, you can add fun music, you can do captions. There's a ton of things you can do with Reels, but importantly, they're shareable to the um, to the public as a link, right? So the Reel itself becomes something I could say at the end of my commercial today, hey guys, here's a Reel I made. Would you share it in the next 10 days as a part of your story, right? And then you could say yes or no, but it's something that it's a tool like a business card that you want other people to pass around or share around. Now, stories on the other hand, they're, they're intended to build connection and trust with your followers. So in general, only people that are following you are going to see these. These disappear. You can also put them in the highlights, which we'll talk a little bit about. Uh, but you can showcase your day in an interesting way, cool things that are happening. You can literally share the other content of those in your network. I was thinking about Nancy with the, the chamber. She actually does a great job already of sharing dozens and dozens and dozens of pieces of content to her stories from her greater community with over 200 members. So when I see her story, I'm seeing all the cool updates and reels and ads and commercials from people out in Snohomish. It's wonderful. 
And then more importantly, from the business perspective, stories are where you get to link to a YouTube video or a podcast or a sales page or another video. You cannot link, you can't sell things very well from a reel, but if you share your reel to your story, then you can add the link. I hope that makes sense. We'll break it down again. This has been recorded if you need to go back through it. Um, one of the big things, whether it's real or story, uh, real or stories, is it's vertical, right? For a while, I was preaching to go horizontal. Now it's it's tall and skinny. Um, captions work in both stories and reels. So if you haven't hit that little sticker button on the top left, can you guys see my my mouse when I point? I think you can. Uh, yeah. Yes. That little sticker, the little smiley sticker, that's going to open it up where you can do captions, polls, GIFs, quizzes, most importantly, captions, because most people are not going to listen to you. They're going to read and maybe they'll listen. Um, it takes a minute. So pack your patience when you're doing this, you guys, for, for reels. Pack your patience. It's going to take a good minute for it to kind of calculate all the words. And then you can edit it if you need to, right? You can position the text, you kind of grab the text and you move it around. And then you can tap a word to edit. So if you got a, a word misspelled wrong, you can kind of go in and change it. This is not a perfect solution. You can usually only edit one word. So there are reasons to use um, other apps, but in general, captions are a fantastic thing that work in both. Um, now you have an option for both of them, show and tell versus talk and tell, right? You guys know I'm very pro visual and what type of visuals might those be? Is it a flat lay? Is it a cool creative angle? Are you showcasing your portfolio? Um, you don't have to show your face in all of these. You can record your screen. If you have an iPhone, they're, just Google, how do I record my screen? It's it's built into your phone, you guys. It's really, really cool. I just learned about it a couple months ago. And then there's the talk and tell. Here's what I know to be true. Here's my opinion. Here's my experience. This is what Gary Vee does over here is all the talking head for the most part. He's having people record him, sharing his thoughts and his opinions. Um, huge opportunity for interviews and collaborations, right? You can do a lot um, with reels for interviews. Um, your voice or theirs. If you're one of those people like, oh, I hit my voice. <laughs> I get you. You can share other people's content. You can actually remake content with other people's audio, which is wild. Um, but I do want to encourage you, use your own voice, right? What is your perspective on, uh, I'm going to use you as an example, Nancy, Snohomish County and businesses locally. Like I would love for more uh, visuals of Nancy saying, here's here's some great companies you should know about versus just showing it, right? So a little bit of that, that FaceTime can be a story. It, it's going to develop your thought leadership muscle. Um, other other people can leverage your audio. And this is one of the things you can turn it on or off in the back end. But it's a cool thing because now you get creative. Like, like Brian, you could actually create a, a visual over Gary Vaynerchuk's audio, <laughs> which I think would be hilarious. <laughs> or Mel Robbins or any of these great people, you can take their audio and then re-show something visual. So it's very playful. Uh, someone else's voice, uh, you know, and this is where on digital p &A, my hope is that we all get to interview one another throughout the year. Like we should, I actually interviewed Karen on, what was it Veterans Day uh, a couple months ago? We did a, a quick live together and it's just another way to, to communicate to your network versus the same thing. So I do value variety with these, but know that you have options. Um, music is huge for both reels and, and audios. And so just be thinking are you, is your brand more classic, traditional, you know, very specific, like all your audience loves the oldies or they all love hip hop or whatever, or are you more trendy and new? Because what I want to challenge you to do is save at least 10 songs. They're a part of your br brand's sound bank. So do that one week when you're not working too hard, just find some music that you love that you know fits your brand because then you can use them uh, throughout the week. Uh, templates versus your own mix. So reels have templates. And this is something interesting that like just today I was at Mara's house and I, I captured some photos on the way because it was a beautiful drive. Like I could literally put five or six clips of my drive and photos of the greenery and the golf course. And I could put those into a template with music and just have it be kind of a thoughtful music. And, you know, it's, it's not thoughtful. It's just, it's like pretty, but I put it to music. Now, if I were to do stories, this can be varied, 
right? So the difference between a reel and a story is like a reel is like a set of content that's kind of in one little video unit. Whereas stories, you might put an ad and then you might go live and then you might do a talking head clip and then you might add in a meme or a statistic or a motivational quote and then you might highlight the event and then you might do another video. So stories are multimedia clips of your day. And you may think, well, shoot, that's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. But there's a huge opportunity for us who are clever and strategic with what is that story that our brand is telling, you know, weaving in testimonials and uh, keynote events and, you know, just really cool behind the scenes or fast forward motions. Now, my disclaimer on the bottom right here, a photo is not a story. <laughs> Right now, I see half my network, the, their story literally includes like one photo of their day. And I'm like, that is a photo, <laughs> nice photo. But I think of a story as at least two items or more. So it could be a photo plus a video or a video, a video and a photo. Or, you know, it's it's multiple pieces of media. Again, you got to decide your tempo. But to me, a photo is not a story. Um, A CTA list. I want to encourage you for stories and reels, write a list of custom things for you. Because if it's, if you're not sure what to say, you know, like do some work on the copywriting end to get clear, what are you inviting them to? Do you want them to send you a direct message? Do you want them to click save so they can save that recipe for a future thing? Do you want them to smash that share button? That's what my sales coach is always saying, <laughs> right? So you can get creative. And I say, mix it up because we're kind of tired of hearing, click the link in my bio, like, now with stories, you can put your link in the story, but definitely have a CTA list from your like general marketing and and work. I missed a video. Where did, there we go. That's so weird. This got out of order. Sorry, guys. So three considerations. Number one, I want you to know, I see it. Thank you. Um, I want you to know your purpose. So I know people right now that are using stories and reels just for networking. It's 100% networking. There are some larger companies, they use their Instagram 100% for hiring and recruiting. And they just want a new customer to come and find that this company is freaking awesome. Um, some people are using it for sales. They've been very strategic with that. Some are just collaborative having fun. Um, I'm in a lot of art communities. And some people, they're not even thinking about the business. They're there just to see cool stuff and get ideas on how to watercolor and how to how to design things in Canva and how do you how do you make a scrapbook, right? So there are people of all ranges using Instagram, the reels, but know for you, what is your purpose? And know that like maybe some month your your goal might be, I'm gonna just go network. And some months maybe it's more creative expression as I really want to teach and share and explain how I did this whole house project renovation. You know, so you gotta decide. But a lot of people, until you know that purpose, you kind of just see it like a waste of time or you're not sure. But I encourage you to pick a purpose or create a new purpose and then have a purpose. Because otherwise, yeah, it's just, it's a little bit overwhelming. I don't know, my slides are being weird. Okay, so this is a new one. Oops, maybe. I want to encourage you all to build your own directory or list. So you guys know me as Marcel Allen. That is my name. But on Instagram, I am at Dreamosity. <laughs> There are dozens and dozens of people where I'm like, oh shoot, wait, what's their name again? <laughs> like their, their username. And so I wanna encourage you to have a directory of, of prospects, one of like internal team members. You know, Mara, I was thinking about you and your, your 80 plus nannies. Like you should know what their Instagram handles are when and if you tag them or if you collaborate with them or if, if they even would allow you to collaborate with them, right? So now we almost even go into social media policy and which team members are pro-social and which ones are like, stay away from me with your camera, right? Because some people do not want to be a part of your marketing team. But anyway, create a directory. And, and you guys know I'm creating a, a public directory from Dreamosity from my newsletter where people can buy in for $50 for the year and be in that directory so you can be found from people all across the county. So that is a public one that I'm helping clients get exposure. But I encourage you, in addition to that, have your own list of, of VIPs. And part of it is if you hire someone like me or a VA or a marketing intern, and all of a sudden, they talk to one of your best customers and they're like, hey, would you like to, you know, like they, they sound like a, a 18 year old. And this is like your long, long term best friend from 40 years ago. You know, like you, you want to be able to let people know who who's who in your community. 
Uh, let's see. And then get intentional. So look at your Instagram activities as like networking. You all showed up here today to Digital p a to do your verbal business card. You're here to hopefully get a couple of new contacts, maybe set some one-to-ones. We're going to spend 90 minutes together, right? So whether you've got five minutes or an hour with Instagram, I encourage you, like, so you've got an hour between meetings, like open up Instagram and say, I'm going to find 10 10 people who I could reach out to in the next month that might need my services. Or like I was thinking about Mara, um, find 10 corporations that I'm not yet on their vendor list, right? Like you're already in Microsoft and Amazon, but how do you get into the, I don't know, Ford or Toyota or like some other dealerships or, you know, like you can literally just be listening for a specific thing. I find that if I'm not listening with intention, it's just kind of random chitter chatter and fun and interesting things and I can get lost in the art world, quite honestly. (laughs) But if I say, I want to find four people who are doing video poorly, that takes me five minutes. You guys, there's a lot of people I could help with. They're not, or they're not doing video at all. So have an intention and maybe your intention is to get three story ideas of how could I better tell this story next month or how could I tell this conference you know like I want some shot list ideas for a conference um the intention can change it doesn't always have to be like a networking event sometimes it's hey I want to go live and encourage people after some major crisis around the country but this one is where if if you feel like you're going to be you got 10 or 20 minutes to set a little intention maybe it's I want to go encourage three people Maybe it's, I want to find two people who are stressed to F out and they need my services. <laughs> like you guys get the idea. Um, okay. Branding lane. This is my thing. These are two examples of two different brands, but in general, you don't have to respond to everything. Like today I was coming home from a client meeting. I started to hail and I kind of wanted to put that to my story, but I'm like, no, I'm not here to report on the weather. I do not want dreamosity to be the weather people. Like I want to encourage you on social media and financial joy and data art. So the more clear you and your team are on what you do, promote, talk about, share, the better. And then have a don't list. Um, a shot list is basically a visual agenda. So maybe today, like I just saw Karen taking a photo, you might have, you know, a little list of what do you want to capture? The better you get at this, the more dynamic it will be, but know, know that a video shot list becomes important. Um, we already talked about this. What? Where did my one slide go? You guys, sorry. I'm really annoyed that my, my favorite slide didn't show. This one, how did I miss this? Okay, <laughs> I was really proud of this. I'm not judging. So, <laughs> oh, it's so, moving. It's, it's moving. moving, look at this. <laughs> so on the left here, you see baking cookies and we've all done this before, but you can literally do like, oh, here's my recipe of this cookies I'm gonna make. And then you literally show a live demonstration of yourself making cookies. And this is how stories are different than reels. Um, and then maybe you show a photo of somebody eating your cookie and then there's another cookie and then there's a flat lay photo, which is like from the top down. And then you see like, there's the kids are all happy eating the cookies. Right. So that's like storytelling 101 with stories. And I challenge you try to record something in your kitchen and make a story. Cause there's a lot of activity in a kitchen, but now at a business conference, you might have like, you might share from the corporation. So I've got a little key here. Every time the color changes, it's content is from another person. And I feel that this is really important for us networkers is that we don't always have to create the content to leverage the content. So you might share an ad of like, hey, I'm going to be at the you know Chamber of Commerce event. And then you, you take a photo or um, a little video snippet talking head of I'm, I'm hoping to go meet some great, you know, business people today. And then you show the video, like it's just kind of a quick show and tell. I met the golf course or I met the, the conference hall. And then you show another ad, maybe another event clip. Maybe you go live for like two minutes of someone's speech, right? Not the whole thing necessarily, unless you're hired to be there to do that. Um, And then maybe you share like a a media bling or a a picture of the slides or just something interesting. And then maybe some more motivation. And then you do another um, video clip. And then you get a testimonial or you get some words of endorsement from someone in the room or you get something, you know, like, like a credibility booster. And then you get the happy selfie of like the ladies you met two of your friends from you know college there and you had such a great time. So these are very different stories, but you can't do this in a reel, right? But you could reshare these type of stories 
to your story. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, how am I doing on time, Brian? You've got two minutes left. I was prepping to give you the red. Okay, good. I think I'm, this was the side I wanted to show you. <laughs> Where you did that one. Okay. Did I show you guys this one? I feel like my slides just got weirded out today. Anyways, there's ways to save for music. Um, three considerations. We talked about that. Know your purpose. In recap, remember to have a purpose. <laughs> uh, build your own directory and get intentional. Consider your branding lane. Why is this in there three times? So weird. It's important. You just, you know. It's really important, you guys. It's really important. You need to reiterate. I don't know. Um, okay. With that, I'm going to wrap up and let you guys know that one of my goals this year is to sell 50 of the revenue ringlet. The revenue link ringlet is my ongoing membership kind of social community for people to pop in twice a month to ask questions oh my gosh i made my first reel now what or hey i have a bigger marketing budget this month what are some other ways i could do paid advertising on instagram or gosh there's one community i really want to penetrate and help how, how should i approach that right so you can bring your your conversations your ideas to the table and get feedback. And so just know that if you guys want to check that out, you can visit therevenueringlet.com. And my challenge to you each today on the call is ask three of your colleagues if they would be interested in learning more about data art. I see data art as a tool, a creative tool to help remarkable leaders and business owners reflect and advance based on their social media activities and their financial results. Um, I'm happy to do a one-to-one -to, -one to talk about what that means more later, but that's my challenge to you is just ask three friends. It could be your spouse. It could be a client. Just say, Hey, do you want to learn about data art? And they'll be like, what, what's that? Be like my friend Marcella, she's going to make it really popular and cool. <laughs> okay. So with that, any questions? Awesome. Yes. Please hit her up with your questions, folks. Ready, set, Someone's go. Someone's got one. Uh, that fantastic. Fantastic information. Thank you, Marcel. You're welcome. I've always wondered, uh, given the, the ability to sort of borrow somebody else's content or overlay your audio on somebody else's visuals, uh, where, where does copyright or does copyright ever come into play these days? I mean, it feels like it's the wild, wild west in some ways. Yeah. So like with music, you'll search your favorite song and you'll find out it's not there. So every artist has a chance to contribute music to this overall, you know, base of music. Um, you can also like Instagram gives you options of saying, don't let people use my voice. So you can choose this and that. Um, so look at your little um, settings in Instagram on which ones you can choose. But that could be a whole other presentation. So I will work on that for a future idea if you want. But do, do many people, I mean, how 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 often do people sort of um, stitch together great content that's not their own? Frequently, very frequently. Okay. And, and here's the thing. Don't put something online that you don't want someone else to recreate. Like yeah. in general, if you're participating with this type of content, and it's kind of fun. Like I would actually love it if Brian Trendler were to take one of my old reels and be like, like, like his brain would take that content and make it freaking fantastic. Like y'all might share those ones, you know, like, and so <laughs> the idea is to be social with people. Like that's what Instagram right. are trying to create is a, um, a creative atmosphere versus, oh, you can't have yeah. my information. Like she just wants right. me to Vogue. Apparently. <laughs> Vogue. Angela, you got a question? Angela. Yeah. Yes. So I have been depending on, I, I, my business half, you know, just sort of half started four years ago and I just sort of, you know, didn't try to grow. I just sort of was happy with my three little clients. And then I hired a business coach and I started a business uh, newsletter and I've tripled my business and it's just, I'm booming and it's awesome. So I've just been relying on my newsletter. Um, and I, I think I'm missing, <laughs> missing some opportunity here. So baby steps. Can I just pull from that newsletter to do kind of what you're talking about here? Or do you recommend yeah. just like do something other than? Yeah. Um, so like with Canva, they have a lot of cool templates for reels where you can literally like copy and paste that content and turn it into like a story. Do mm -hmm. people want to read an essay on Instagram? No. Right. They right. Entertain us and teach us and inspire us and like give us a reason to, to follow along. And so mm -hmm. I think 
the bigger question you should be asking is why should businesses follow me and how can I continue to educate, inspire, and entertain them, right? Because my, my guess is just from being in a similar field is your main clients aren't going to follow you. Other people from your networking aren't going to follow you, right? Because my right. clients are me because they don't want to be on social media. So right. like, it, it's kind of interesting. You got to find out who's really following you, like in terms of your listenership. Mm -hmm. And it's probably not just newsletter. I mean, that's like you're scratching the surface, but you're right. still telling like here, you're here today. You're at the Mary Kay West event here. You might be kayaking another day. Like you're allowed to let people see more of your, your life on Instagram. And mm -hmm. at the same time, don't be afraid of, of selling and inviting people to know like, Hey, if you want more time freedom, hire me. So you can actually, you know, get away from zoom and go out on the golf course or whatever those benefits might be of your service. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Marcel, are you finding more success on Instagram and with Instagram, either stories or reels, or you finding any value on Facebook's equivalent? I know they're all owned by the same company, but what sort of, what sort of results have you experienced that have gotten you excited about all this? Yeah. So probably 75% of my experiments right now are going to Instagram. So I've been like doubling down on Instagram just to see, to me, it's the more aesthetic visually useful platform like facebook i love it for groups and community building but the reels for some reason i'm just getting fed a bunch of weird reels that are not even in english quite honestly so i'm kind of like whatever i don't know how the algorithm got off there but i'm getting content from all over the globe which i don't actually want like yeah. immediately so instagram I've, I've curated a more local network i would say okay thank you any other questions from marcel Nancy? I have a question for you, Marcel. Uh, I like what you were saying about how you wanted to take pictures of the hail and how it was pretty, but you didn't want to put it on your page because it didn't really go with the brand. Yeah. So for that, do you have multiple Instagram accounts? Do most people have multiple to just kind of go in different directions with how they want to share? Because you probably have a whole personal life that, you know, appreciates certain things that doesn't apply to your business life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I have a lot of Facebook groups. Like I have a humor heels group, which gets a ton of random humor and like like feel good funny stuff that I just I kind of spam that group with funny things because it's like it's it's the group I created. <laughs> so I'm like I, I got my own rule. So that group gets all sorts of things that does not go to my personal feed because it's just it's not it's out of my lane, right? Um I do, I do not personally have a personal Instagram other than Dreamosity. Like to me, I am the brand right now. So it's, it's kind of the same. If I were to hire five team members, I would probably get my own personal one. But for now, you know, um, I do have a social media policy that's kind of strict of like what I don't do. Like I always tell clients, like I don't drink and post. So if I'm having a, a girl's night, like I'm going to be off Instagram and Facebook because the, those are the stories that are not going to like, I don't want to be tagged in those photos, ladies, you know, like. There, like there's a way you can kind of set that up strategically um or just don't do things that you would regret having you know on the internet quite honestly no. uh I don't know if that does that help Nicole yeah no it does I just I I feel like it definitely you use social media it sounds like for business like that is what you use it for versus more of like friendships and something like that per se I use it for both yeah okay <laughs> But I also sell services for social media, right? So right. what's weird is a lot of my network still doesn't know like all the skills I have because not everything is on social. It's on a blog post or like like here, this will go on YouTube. It may or may not get to Facebook. Um, like they may or not, may not see this whole presentation, but um, yeah, I think it's just that you gotta you gotta decide for your for yourself what are you most comfortable about. Okay. Okay. And so I want to, I want to just comment really quick, just because it's a little bit of a plug for Marcel and I'm sorry to do this, but I will say I had Marcel come and meet this morning with my business partner and myself. We've been in business for eight years and we've had a social media gal and we had some help and like, blah, you know, it's like a smattering and 90 minutes with her. I mean, it got us like, I mean, we created what five to six stories. I mean, I still have to like, but she like taught us everything, like how to do it yourself and how to make it look professional just in 90 minutes. And so I can't wait for what's to come, you know, in future meetings. So if any of you guys seriously need to figure this out, awesome. she's amazing. Mara, thank you. 
Okay, you Nancy, I'm going to give you honors of last question that we need to move on just due to time. So go for it if you still have a question. I thought you did beforehand. Okay. I'm Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. All right. Excellent. Well, does anyone else want to take the last question slot? If not, I'm going to share screen again and bring up uh, another uh, slide basically that completely separates us from anyone that anyone else does out there. Hearing none. Okay. This is called the speech breakout. Um, again, for the for the guests on the line here, um, this really does separate us from any of any of the competition from the networking group's perspective. We go deeper into what we just experienced. It's a great opportunity for Marcel to try really hard to not provide input because this is for us. It's also a great lesson for her because if there's silence, um, that means we didn't hear or we don't know and we we weren't paying attention. So let's talk about target market what people or businesses would need Marcel's service. And feel free just to speak out loud. Everyone can jump off mute if you want to. I can start and just say, just like Mara said, folks that might already be working with someone that, you know, quote unquote, helps them with their social media. And maybe it's just time for a change, right? Not to, you know, slam or slander anyone that's currently out there, but sometimes you're not getting what you need to. And it could be a pretty refreshing slap on the back of the head when you have a session with Marcel and you walk away going, wow. So. Well, and I, I would even add that complete neophytes. I, I mean, I, I, and I consider myself among those. I, there's an aspect of all of this that is, um, that creates anxiety. You know, how does it, ha not only the techniques, but you know, what are the rules of the road, if any? And, right. and uh, an audience, a the analog audience for delivering good digital information is huge. And I can cheat a little bit and tell you that uh, I spoke to Marcel one-on-one -on -one and, uh, and this solidifies a, a business that has a message that is message-based. And so a lot of coaches, for example, that, that what they do is, is, is storytelling and they need to tell their story it would be excellent. I love that. Thank you, Angela. Any other feedback on target market? We can I would say anybody who needs... Um help with the digital presence yeah mm -hmm. or even starting a di digital presence excellent yeah so let's go ahead and kind of bleed over into key conversations because some of what, what we've just said you could just put a question mark at, at the end right and it becomes something that triggers a referral things that we hear about uh, whether it's you know mm -hmm. family friends other business owners peers salespeople. Um, what would make us hear something or even read something on social media and make us think, I know who they can talk to. I just did this, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I have a client who said, you know, I'm doing all this posting, but I'm not reaching anybody new. Yep, there you go. Yep, they're just fishing in their own pond, right? That's, yeah. That's a mm -hmm. mistake. Excellent, excellent comment. Anyone else? Well, anybody asking that, that central question that Marcel started with, you know, what's the difference between reels and stories or, or anything like that but and by the way a great way to to um to get into your content Mar marcel to, to create a question and expand from that mm -hmm. yeah honestly um the biggest value i got out of today not to say i haven't done the countless other times she's guided me between my three companies uh, including our shared company is the fact that you can have conversations on Instagram. And I know this sounds silly, but I don't think I've really ever 100% grasped that because I just see people leaving comments on posts. I don't really think of it as engagement. It's just someone from somewhere around the world leaving a note or something. I don't ever think they reply. And that makes me feel really stupid. <laughs> but, you know, it is an opportunity and I don't think about how to pursue that. So that, that was awesome, Marcel. Anyone else under key yeah. conversations? Okay. Beneficial syndications. Um, Marcel, I want to just lean on you again for a second. We've worked to make this more clear, but for some reason, I always mentally stutter on how to talk about this section and how we could help benefit you. Can you yeah, like, on this real quick? Like, like if you know a good Facebook group that is promotion friendly, that's a good lead for me because a lot of groups are like, no promo zone. Like I, I don't even have time for them. But if they're promo friendly, like I might take a client's video and drop it in there into a comment if it makes sense. So I'm, I'm always mm -hmm. looking for good places to go. And then from the financial joy and data art perspective, 
I'm really looking for those communities with like lifelong learners. I love to to learn and grow and be creative. So not just like, oh, I need to do fine art because I'm a snob, but like I just kind of want to have mess and you know make a mess and have fun and learn, right? So I'm I'm trying to find those art communities to really bring financial joy to because it really takes that lifelong learner mentality versus like I'm already a perfect artist who doesn't right. need to learn. Like those people I don't need. <laughs> so you might have covered pretty much a wide breadth, but but thank you for that mm -hmm. description, basically. Does anyone else have any other ideas from a beneficial syndication perspective? Any places that she should be hanging around? And if you hear weird sounds in the background, it's my dog. I apologize. <clears throat> hey, Marcel, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, How does it make sense for you to use LinkedIn or do you use LinkedIn already? I, I don't do it for clients unless we're trying to hire, oh. hire and fire. Um, I tend okay. to have people who are in sales and promotion mode. You don't, I mean, you can sell on LinkedIn, but you're more of selling the opportunity of working for my fine establishment. Like okay, it's yeah. a different crew than like come to comedy. Yeah. So you have to have that voice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah. do like LinkedIn, but not necessarily for the storytelling creativity and fun. Yeah. You know, you can put a blog post there. Yeah. Do you think there's room for that in LinkedIn? If that's something that, you know. Yeah. Like I've got my example? new Instagram directory called Remarkable Resources and I should absolutely be going through my LinkedIn mm. contacts because a lot of them, yeah. you know, have seen me thrive for the last 15 years and I can now, I don't know. Yeah. So definitely. I just, I've, I focused stream honestly over Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram for 15 years. So it's like, those yeah. are the four I know how to make money on. Those are the four I help my clients with. Um, uh -huh. I'm all about encouraging people to try things like TikTok or LinkedIn or yeah. threads. And, you know, there's a lot of ways to win. And so I, I'm, I'm a fan of multiple tactics for sure. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just realizing because in LinkedIn, a lot of times it's a lot of younger folks on LinkedIn, a lot of younger folks live yeah. on LinkedIn a lot of times. So that's what I was kind of, you know, connecting that with. So yeah, but cool. good job. thank you. Yeah. Okay. The next section, I just killed the, the screen because I have a memory is simply what other businesses can we bring into this digital chapter um, that not only helps all of us, but because it's all about Marcel today, what might help increase her referral network specifically? What other types of businesses can we think of? Well, business coach. Definitely business coach, yep. Um, I always think about event coordinators. I mean, again, digital p &A covers the entire Pacific Northwest. It's not tied just directly into one zip code. And then of course, Karen loved us so much. She, left, she moved over to Arizona. Um, so we're covering two states. Um, but there's always a possibility to have someone like that join the group that can bring a number of different resources and opportunities to Marcel. Um, I really am in dire need and also want a copywriter and copy editor. That's someone that she could work in tandem with also that could benefit anybody who has a website, anybody who creates publications, et cetera. Marketing materials, right? Huh. Any other businesses? I, I tried to reach out to a trademark uh, attorney, um, but she said that she had too many other networking that she was doing. It's like, dang, we need her. <laughs> Good problem to have. She, she's got too much. Okay. Well, good. Yeah, definitely a trademark attorney. People um, often forget about that, but you know, lawyers just don't do everything, right? They're very, very specific. And I'm finding more and more that uh, uh, people tend to think a lawyer is like a, a, a general blanket <laughs> term. No. Yeah, she's very specific, does trademarks only. Wonderful. Patents also or just trademarks? Just trademarks. Wow, that's she's niched just to do trademarks. Yeah. Uh. And it's it's a great price point too. Huh. You have to send me that information, Karen, or please. Yeah, because she's trademarking my KK financial solutions. Good. Yeah, that's 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 very very important. Mm -hmm. Cool. You okay. know, I always like to recommend architects. Uh, for Marcel, you know, they're creatives. Yeah. Uh, and they're working with a variety of people, especially architects that have their own business, so mm -hmm. are out on their own, and so they're they're working with homeowners, they're working with businesses. And so that would be a, a nice addition. You know, that's a really good, good point. And it's ironic that an architect that has to be very specific down to the millimeter, right? Quite often, many of the trades, their social media is a mess. 
right. and, or they don't have consistency, I mean, even if it's just with the befores and afters. So from a training perspective, the inspirational and guidance and like rah-rah perspective, Marcel could really put them on the right track. So great idea. Okay. Um, once again, I'm scattering screens here, going back and forth. We are at the next section. Um, Marcel, thank you so much for your presentation. I forgot to say that. Great job. Really, really fantastic. Uh, we're back to sharing screens. Um, I know we just covered this, but it's important to point out that we really like bringing in businesses that quite honestly, many of them think they're not a good fit for a networking group. Well, we say nay, not because we like horses or something, but because honestly, these are folks that might already be selling online might not be tied to a zip code. They can sell, they can ship, they can deliver whatever anywhere in the continental US or beyond. And they should have a chance to be connected with an incredible network like PNA North Northwest and all of you. So some of these are a little bit outside of the box. Voiceover artist, 3D modeler, cartoonist, custom jewelry, right? Um, all of these types of ones are, are, are really valid and that we'd like to find. So think about that. If you know people, invite them to the next meeting right or i can put my contact information in the chat window also introduce them to me if they join you don't even have to be part of pna i will provide you a nice little spiff in the form of greenbacks moolah or clams if you'd rather um next up is our referrals and testimonials mm -hmm. i'm going to leave this on the screen because we all know how to do it let's just go ahead and go back around the um the group if you have a referral or testimonial, please speak toward it. If you don't, it's okay. We're not going to judge you, at least not while this is recording. But we just want to point out that um, if you have any closed business as well and you'd like to share about that, we, we, we'd like to celebrate that, right? We'd like to point out that it's a really neat thing that business is either exchanging hands between members or outside of the group, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I think I have all the names here. I don't think I missed anybody. Yeah. Miss Marcel? Start us off. Oh, you guys are all just so wonderful and beautiful. And I love that you're all here today. <laughs> so there's my testimonial for all of you. Can I say that? Um, and then I don't know if I have, well, I will give Karen a shout out. She's been doing a fantastic job with another community. She's been leading the pack and running the, running the Zoom for our champion community. So great job with that, Karen. And then Nancy, I had, uh, we met up for macaroons. Well, I had macaroons. She had a breakfast sandwich at Frost the other day. And it was just really good to, to connect with her and hear about her vision for Snohomish County. I, I can't imagine what it's like having 200 members. So I just am so inspired by you, Nancy. And, and Angela, it's just, thank you for being here. And Mara, great to see you this morning. Um, and Brian, thanks for your encouragement on my publication and editing support. I need to find a professional editor, but he's been covering it in the meantime. So thank you. <laughs> I am a professional editor. I'm just open to having you find someone else. Hold on a second. <laughs> thank you, Marcel. Mr. Mike. Ah, well, I, um, I, I, echoing Marcel, this is a wonderful group. I very much enjoy my time here. Thank you, Mara, for a terrific, uh, more than one to one, a really great meeting uh, a little bit more than a week ago. And, and I learned a ton and have been thinking a lot about uh, your business and, and how it might, um, how there might be some opportunities amongst some of the, the firms and companies with which I work. And Nancy, uh, we last spoke when I was at BizX. Uh, I enjoyed that, and, and I look forward to getting in touch again with all of you. I'm sorry, Mara. Did I did I mispronounce Mara's name? Thank you, Brian. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> it's it's like it's Sarah, it's like Sarah, but it, I, I, I answered to Mara. <laughs> I should have known that. I apologize. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll smooth it over. I'll just move on. Um, I shout out big time to Marcel. She and I met this week. Um, we're in another networking group together and we did a one on one and, um, and you explained the, the circle data circle to me and I bought the book and I devoured it. And then I got inspired and I took my first three months of income and expenses and created one. Using I saw Canva. that. <laughs> You know, it, it was like, me. he was so excited. I was so excited. I'll tell you that um, 
a lot of the money that I make goes to my boys. We have two boys in college, one in middle school, the one in middle school loves nice shoes. So, uh, and that's okay. I, I'm happy to do that. And so seeing that on in, in a beautiful way made me feel pretty good about it. it before it was just like, you know, all my money is going to you know, these kids and, and, and really seeing it in a beautiful way, just said, you know what, that's awesome. And it just made it beautiful. And, um, I, I, now I'm going to do one that compares my reach out, my networking and my, um, uh, social media, I guess, to how many people I add to my, to my, um, clientele, but thank you. Big shout out to Marcel. Um, well, like, you know, like I mentioned earlier, um, I'm, I was so happy to meet with Marcel this morning. Can't wait uh, for that to continue. And, um, I'm fairly new to the group, but I'm excited of what's um, happening. Mike, it was great connecting with you last week. And I'm, I'm also having coffee tomorrow with Keith, Brian, you put me in touch with Keith. And so we're meeting tomorrow and uh, looking forward to that. I can't wait to get to know more of what everyone else does, because as we're dealing with businesses and families and you name it, um, it'll be a nice way to help spread the word on what everyone else does. When you're up. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Brian. Brian, ever since I met you, like we've met like recently, Brian and I met, I would say three weeks ago. And he's been just an awesome guy to also push me, you know, to, to continue on these relationship and, and network more. He's been able to provide me resources as well. Um, I'm fairly new to, you know, my industry has been a couple of years for me myself. So networking is, is very big for me. And so, um, and being able to make those, you know, relationship and, and build those relationship. And Brian has been so passionate with what he does and, and he's an awesome guy. And I think everyone in this, in this video chat mm -hmm. would, would agree with me here. So um, thank you, Brian. I really appreciate your work and, and uh, connecting with individuals and networking groups. So. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll Venmo you 20 bucks for that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to give a shout out to uh, Marcel. Uh, we were on to our other uh, little champions networking thing that I facilitate. And she wanted some feedback on the actual, the digital, um, what is it that you call with the we gave you money so you could promote our Instagram. <laughs> oh, the remarkable resources. Remarkable resources. Yeah. yeah. So basically the context of the meeting is you can come in and do a 20 minute presentation or a 10 minute presentation and get feedback. And so she used some of the extra time to get some feedback. So I just want to give a shout out because um, I think that the whole premise of that helps people like Marcel to kind of understand to how to talk about the things that she does. And then um, the rest of you, I just need to meet with you. Uh, I meant to get Rosie on my schedule and I had, I have it, it, I keep moving it on my calendar and I just need to get it done. Um, and shout out, last time I forgot, uh, I was at, I have taken some laugh tech class. I took one class, I took the 101. And you guys still teach that, correct? So I just wanted to give a shout out. If you want to be able to learn how to put humor into your presentations, that is one of the best classes you could ever take. So thank you. Yeah, I just have a shout out for Marcel and Brian. Thanks for the invite to Digital PNAs. This is my first time visiting you guys and it's been a pleasure. Nice meeting everybody. And I hope to hopefully come back for another meeting soon. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Okay, um, I also want to give a shout out to Marcel um, for the content today, um, just really helped clarify my understanding of the difference between reels and stories. Um, and as she um, mentioned, I do do a lot of stories as a way to share our members and occasionally do reels, but that's driven by the fact that videos that I'm posting are long and they don't work. So Instagram is put, prompting me to do it as a reel instead of a story. So the, I appreciate the education around that. And I'm definitely going to um, to work on, on being more intentional about what I'm posting. And I also appreciated the part about adding in some video or um, 
maybe some testimonials that, that really um, resonated with me. I appreciate that. I appreciate you sharing um, that today. And also, um, I really enjoyed our meeting um, that we had at Frost. Um, who knew that Frost even served alcohol? Um, so um, I, I'm still trying to wrap my brain around the full depth and breadth of what you do, Marcel. So um, I appreciate um, the opportunity to come today and to um, listen and also to connect with everybody else here in the group. So thank you so much for allowing me to participate today. Thanks, Nancy. So I'd like to, as always, give a shout out to Marcel and Brian both because they, I both knew, I, I can't talk to them. There's been too much going on in my personal world, but anyways. Um, so about 10, was it 10 years ago, I think, Brian? Yeah, I started, um, you know, Eagle Rose Bookkeeping. At, at, you know, the, I remember still Brian saying when he met me, what soap opera do you got going on here? <laughs> and so he helped me rebrand. Out came Tap Services. Marcel got me in front of a phone and uh, did the horizontal at that time. Yeah, because it was big back then doing it horizontally. And, you know, both of them have really encouraged me just to kind of be who I am today. I've blossomed a lot. I've changed a lot. I went back to the corporate world you know, chewed me up and spit me out. And uh, yeah, I came back because I was just like, I can make just the same amount of money as they are and have my own like, set of rules, you know, and um, it's been great. You know, I've been getting a lot of referrals from um, Brian and I'm almost making the same amount as I did when I left the company. So it's p and has been amazing. So thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, I don't know if I could follow all that other than I will say that yes, Gwen, it's been fun. It's been about four weeks since I've known you and met you at Chamber and I just like your energy and people like that. I qualify as good people. So let's introduce to the world. Mara and I knew each other at Microsoft 28 some odd years ago. We just reconnected uh, via the the, the Book of Faces, and she has now invested in PA, both a physical chapter she's a member of and now digital PA. So, um, love to see you here. I think your business is amazing, and every other business needs to offer it to their clients or to, excuse me, to their employees, because why the hell wouldn't they? Um, everyone on the call here, I think, is remarkable. Um, and Marcel, just so you guys know, A, she didn't pay me for this, but anything I have done on social media, literally, between my three businesses, including the one that we share, has been due to her guidance, guidance, kindness, and patience with me. Because I'm now realizing every year I'm getting dumber. And I have asked her how many times what the heck the difference between a real and a story is. Because I keep forgetting which is semi-permanent and which you can never remove. And she rolls her eyes and then she says, bless your heart. And I can read lips. So I see her do that. And then she tells me again and she guides me through it, whether it's scripting, or whatever. I am an improvisational bass speaker. It's a nice way of saying I suck at writing things down. And she's been amazing. And anything, any exposure that we have achieved online has been because she is the guiding light behind it. So have a discovery session with her. Sign up a lifetime, one time price for the revenue ringlet. If you're not doing it, I would just look at you and judge you and waggle my finger because you should be. So it's worth the investment. You're investing in you and her big freaking beautiful brain. So I highly encourage that. Okay, after that big old thing here, let's go really quickly back to sharing screen. So many buttons, so little time. Can you see it? Yes, okay. So this is our speaker rotation. Next meeting, Mara, she's gonna be talking about her company. And then Mike, I'm gonna give you an opportunity if you think you can make the May 1st one, talk about the new company you're with does that work with your availability in the hamster bowl yeah i think so may day i'll have a, a socialist message on may day oh wow okay let's maybe re, re, re rethink this but okay <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to hearing about that and then on the off chance we have a new member anytime soon the spot would be open if not we would reset 
the speaker rotation. And if memory serves, that might mean Karen is up. So hang tight for that. We'll keep you updated. And then let's cover a few more quick things. We do put on a local comedy show for anyone in the Pacific Northwest. We as in Marcel and myself. It is called the Comedy Night and Improv. It is located at Good Brewing Barrel House in Bothell, Washington. It's a really, really fun time. If we do pack the house, there's 85 people in there laughing with you. 84 if you're good at math, because you'd be 85. Anyway, um, details. But they're really fun events and it's growing more and more every single month. It's just a one time a month thing, but it's a lot of fun. I will put that link directly in the chat window. I see some of you snapping pictures. So thank you for that. But uh, it's just a really neat opportunity. And we do have sponsors of the show. So we'll you know, mention a few names, things like that. But I do have a dirty little history 30 plus years ago before I met Mara. And when I was doing comedy throughout the Pacific Northwest, and once you see me as MC, you'll know why I stopped, <clears throat> in all honesty. But they're really fun times. We encourage you to be there. And now let's talk about one more thing. Costs, money. It does cost if you want to be part of digital PNA. Um, because I'm trying my best to honor the fact that inflation is a thing in my normal $80 at Safeway is now close to $190. Um, I split it into a payment plan uh, if folks need it, but digital PA is a flat $600 a year. There's a one time registration of $75. And why is it basically double the price of a regular membership? It's because we are covering the entire Pacific Northwest and marketing to all of that versus just one demographic, like one of our other nine chapters throughout the Pacific Northwest. If you are interested, please set up a time with me. I'll put my info in the chat window. I'm going to kill the screen really quickly because we just have two more minutes. Does anybody else have any announcements or anything that they'd like to share really quickly? Silence, I guess, is a good thing. I don't have one on the calendar yet, you guys, but I am going to do a workshop coming up called um, Organizing and Optimizing Your Body of Work. You all have a body of work, right? If you've done one video, you've got a body of work, right? It might be a small body of work, but as you grow to having dozens and dozens or hundreds of videos, there is a way to organize and optimize that. So stay tuned. I don't have a date yet because I'm just remembering that I'm going to do this, um, but it's probably about a month or two away. But that will be a really good one for all of you who are wanting to do this social media thing strategically in a maybe an organized way but sometimes we have to go back and clean up our mess first so it'll be a really fun event coming up i want to encourage everyone to do something really quickly on the chat screen there is a little button where you can oh, I'm, now i'm missing it <laughs> just about to say save the text there we go it's a little file icon on your screen. So where you're writing in it, something in the chat where you've got the text option, a smiley face, and you have a file. Nope, that's not it. Marcel, they moved it. I'm trying three to get dot, three dots at the top is where mine is. Did it? Save chat. I will be sending yes. out minutes. Oh, okay. Part. Okay. Yeah. Thank so. you. That's thank you. So they did move it. It's right on the top of the chat window. So three little dots. If you want to save the chat on your own so you don't miss any of these things, um, feel free to do that now because we're about to shut down for the day. Yeah, and before we shut down, yes, because I'm I'm sneaky like that. So the original vision of digital PNA was for us to each be able to bring a video saying, "Hey, I made this real. I made this video. I I was on this podcast. I just had this TEDx speak." speech whatever and then for other people to share it today um it ran a little bit long because we have a bigger group but when i send out the minutes i want you to all think of one video that you've made recently or maybe a blog post it could be um a two minute thing it could be short and sweet or a little bit longer and then send it back to people say hey feel free to read this right not that you have to but part of our whole goal is not just to introduce you to uh, leads and referrals, but to help you amplify your content. Now, if somebody sends you a video and you're like, ooh, I would never share that, this is why we're here is to provide feedback at another date or a one-to-one -one saying, hey, that was a really good attempt, but I have some ideas on how to improve that video. And here's why I didn't share it, because we all have um, 
a level of preferences or whatnot with video, but just know that if you've got video content and you want us to see that, that's still part of this, this, the goal of the group. Bye, Brian. Hey, wait, make me co-host before you kill it. I'm waving to Nancy. Oh, okay, Nancy. Bye, Nancy. <laughs> Anyways, I think my ramble makes sense. If not,